Hi, I'm Keith White. I'm the Executive Director of the National Council on Problem Gambling here in Washington, D.C. This is the busiest time I've seen in the history of the National Council. And I've been here, as, as Maureen knows, uh, more than two decades. Uh, so this is there's an unprecedented um, expansion of gambling, and it's mainly online sports betting. And there's also, I think, a, a, a corresponding rise in public awareness of gambling as a national issue and more importantly, the, an increased awareness of problem gambling as a national public health issue. And that's why it's really so important uh, to come together at the Focus on the Future conference and talk about uh, where this issue is going on a national basis. The GRIT Act is the Gambling Research Investment and Treatment Act, and it would provide the first ever federal funding for problem gambling treatment and research. I think we can all agree this would have an unprecedented impact on our field. Um, and I'll tell you why. Two reasons. One, it would recognize the federal government's first dedicated investment in problem gambling prevention and treatment. And it would the span of the bill is 10 years. So it would finally allow us to build some sustained programs that can really create the evidence and show um, uh, change is possible. And the second reason that it's important is this bill, the GRID Act, is funded by uh, a taking a percentage of the existing federal tax on every single sports bet. Every single legal sports bet that is placed in the United States, for every $4 in sports bets, the federal government takes one penny. However, in this day and age, with this massive expansion of sports betting across the country, those pennies added up to this year over 250 million dollars in federal sports betting tax revenue. The GRIT Act would take half of the sports betting excise tax for the next 10 years. So if the bill had passed this year, it would have brought $125 million in dedicated federal funding for problem gambling research and problem gambling treatment. The passing of the GRIT Act is going to take a lot of work, and I'm really so glad to be out there in the Pacific Northwest to be talking to advocates from across the region uh, about how they can support the GRID Act and kind of be part of that change that they want to be. So the easiest way uh, to learn more is to go to gridact.org, where you're going to find talking points, the text of the bill, fact sheets, uh, petitions, you know, opportunities for, for regular citizens and people in the field to get involved. And then, of course, our strength is in our grassroots structure. So in working with the Washington State and the Oregon Councils on Problem Gambling, working with our friends and partners uh, in the regulatory space and even in the gambling space, I think we're going to help demonstrate that there's an enormous uh, groundswell of support uh, to provide these, these funds to help not just states try and do problem gambling prevention, uh, treatment and research a little bit better, but to help those individuals who are struggling. So there's a chance for us to make a, 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 a impact at scale across the country, but it starts with the grassroots and, and it's gonna start here in the Pacific Northwest. In this moment of the expansion of gambling, uh, we know that, that not, not all gambling expands equally. I think the group that's at biggest risk for increases in gambling participation and biggest risk for increases in gambling problems are young male online sports bettors. And so, the college age population is has to be the biggest target, not just for prevention, but for education, treatment and research and recovery, because these are the groups that are um, most dramatically impacted by the, the expansion of online uh, sports betting. And so GRID Act would do several things. One, it would just raise public awareness and make sure that everyone knows that this is, this is a public health issue uh, that needs to be addressed. And two, um, you know, universities are often able to access uh, federal research and federal treatments funding uh, through their state service agencies and directly through uh, research funded by a group like the National Institutes of Drug Abuse. So GRID Act provides uh, not just additional uh, opportunities for research and treatment, but it provides opportunities for additional partnerships. And, and as we all know, you know, we cannot solve a, a national public health issue like problem gambling alone. We need partners, we need engaged stakeholders, and we need stakeholders who are incentivized to address this field because now there's dedicated problem gambling money that's finally coming down from the national level. 
the expansion of sports betting we're seeing right now is is fundamentally different than any other waves of gambling expansion we've ever seen. So some of us live through the growth of casinos or even earlier on, the growth of state lotteries or other forms of gambling. But what makes sports betting so different in this moment is the role of technology and the massive changes that that technology has brought to uh, sports betting itself. So no longer uh, are people betting days in advance of, of, of a game and on, on just the outcome of the game. Now there are hundreds, if not thousands, of potential propositions within each game, perhaps even within each quarter or within each down or based on the performance of actual individual players. So sports betting has, has changed dramatically from what we grew up with. And that makes this expansion so much different than other previous expansions. And I think it may have tremendous repercussions for uh, the policy work that we do. And for obviously for the major categories, it's going to have in massive impacts on how we do prevention, tremendous impacts on how we do education, you know, significant impacts on treatment. And of course, then responsible gambling and recovery. Every aspect of our system is going to need to adapt to the, to the challenging world of new modern online sports bay. I think the first message is think globally, but act locally. So we know that we're stronger together. And by coming together at this conference, we can work with colleagues, we can work with peers, we can work with other stakeholders in this field to better understand where everybody's coming from, but also to agree on pushing forward to common solutions. Uh, and these, these national and even global trends in gambling and technology, uh, you know, are, are profoundly challenging. But so, too, are the opportunities we have to come together and, and really uh, address them. Uh, the second thing is, is, of course, that what we've never had before in the prom gambling field is federal support. The prom gambling field has been defined by state-by-state -state efforts, by advocates like at the Evergreen Council and the Oregon Council on Prom Gambling, working within their states and trying to look at best practices, but not getting, not getting any support from the federal government, from the National Institutes of Health, from Health and Human Services, and from all the other alphabet soup federal health agencies. So the second major, uh, I think, takeaway or thing that we're going to discuss is how we can bring some top-down support to everybody who's working so hard at the state and at the regional level. And I think we've got tremendous opportunities uh, to engage in communications both ways for the top-down and from the bottom up. The last thing I think we need to focus on is, is that, that movement towards social change. Because ultimately, social issues like gambling or like many other social issues around addiction or health uh, are really only solved when it's not just the, not just the, the, the stakeholders. When you broaden out the conversation and we bring a lot of people who may not even know they have a stake in, in, this pub, in a public health issue, we bring them together and they too push for social change. We still need to have that societal change to make sure that everyone sees not just a, a, that gambling is a national issue, but the problem gambling is a national public health issue, but that there is hope and help. Just like we say to individuals who are getting ready to call the helpline, there is hope and help. We want to tell ourselves in the field, in our states, our regions, and, and eventually a national level, we want to bring to the entire United States public, to American society, that problem gambling is a public health issue, but it, it is preventable and treatable if we gather together, if we all together push for that societal change. I'm so grateful to be invited to address uh, the Focus on the Future conference because I believe this is the model that we should see in all the regions across the country. Truly, different states coming together with, with shared uh, vision and a shared expertise. Uh, this is what we need to see across the country. So I believe Focus on the Future is and should be a national model for how we can come together as a field and try and help solve these national public health problems. Because we have a rare opportunity uh, to work across state boundaries and to bring together the wisdom of not just the region, but you know, even um, from people from across the country.